The second ninth place semi final will be contested between Canada, the 13th seeds, and Great Britain, who are ranked 10. Of course, Great Britain rebooted with Scotland, England, and Wales coming together for this series in line with the Olympic structure. And they've had a roller coaster of a tournament. But the prize here is a place in the ninth place final against New Zealand. Here are the starting lineups Canada. With their big guns, Burner, Teal, and Gongo and Mora can make things happen. Great Britain, the captain, Robbie Ferguson. Look to Max McFarlane in the number 30 shirt. He can be very exciting. And the Welshman, the only Welshman in the Great Britain squad this weekend, Morgan Williams. Ferguson leads out GB to the sound of the Welsh choir ringing around Hong Kong Stadium. Phil Berner, the Canadian captain, but it's been a strange old tournament for this Great Britain side. They beat South Africa in pool play, but lost to Uruguay, which really brought an end to their hopes of qualification. They did, however, win their game this morning against Japan to reach this stage. Canada, well, two losses, two wins for them over Kenya and Hong Kong, which is why they have reached this stage. Craig Chan, local referee, will take charge of this match. Thomas Isherwood and Canada in their black kit get us underway. Didn't go 10, but Williams has decided to play on. Roddick's there. There's his Barden and here's Alec Coombs, born in Hong Kong. He's had a cracking tournament. Scored plenty of tries. Four of them, in fact. Williams to Max McFarland. Here he goes. Such an exciting player. Barden to Ferguson. Ross McCann, another Scotsman. In this squad, offloads the ball to Coombs. He's in again. Alec Coombs in front of the south stand. That's number five for the weekend. What a day out this guy's having. The hometown boy doesn't disappoint here at the Hong Kong Sevens. Fantastic build-up by GB. Ross McCann just doing what he does best, bumping off defenders and setting up his teammates. And Coombs just has been all over the try zone this weekend in the 20 shirt. He is one to watch for this team because he is a big lump, but boy, can that boy move. He's got some pace behind him. And don't forget about his restart ability. He can get up there in the skies and win the ball for them. That's the voice of former USA Euro 7's captain Zach Test providing expert comments for us through this one. Good start for Great Britain. Isherwood just made contact within the air there. So that's a straight penalty. It's really come on Thomas Isherwood, hasn't he? Burst onto the scene for Canada as a... A bit of a firebrand from Okotoko and out Alberta, born in the UK, but very much Canadian these days, and he's really improved as a playmaker in this Canadian side. Here's Ngongo. Good run from Ngongo straight through the middle. Penalty to Great Britain, though. Jamie Barden's reeled away, holding his throat. Roddick over to Max McFarland. Here he goes. Offloads it out the back, back to Roddick. Basketball style pass to Williams. Ferguson just buys a bit of time. And engages with the Canadian defence. 
almost like a game of chess this one so far just trying to lure some more canadian defenders into the breakdown i want to get them honey potting in that area so they can try and create an overlap here's max mcfarlane here he goes again he's got support guess who it's alec coombs good tackle on him from issue had gone forward in contact play on Yeah, great cover tackle there by Isha Wood. And then good recognition. Yeah, great chop tackle by Isha Wood. Just goes around the bootlaces. And then his teammate just very aware that GB likes to play with continuity and just knocking the ball out of bounds. Look at that, 18 to 2 to the passes. GB got more possession here. Coming around on the loop is Ferguson to Roddick. Williams, Morgan Williams gets the hands free. And it's gone forward. Good defense from Canada. Yeah, these Canadians are a scrappy bunch. They don't want to give any team an inch. And you can see it right there on those last two passages of play, not giving any room. Yeah, just getting rid of the fend there, driving down, trying to cinch. And then just making sure that that offload wasn't clean. And then unfortunately for Ferguson, he just couldn't quite, quite gather that ball back. Jake Hill and Phil Burner, the Snake and Goose podcast, they co-host. Have you guessed it on that yet, Zach? No, I've listened in on it. It's quite entertaining. Those two have a, quite a interesting personalities. Eclectic characters, aren't they? Yeah. Eccentric. Yeah. Great to see some personalities in the game. And we've got a penalty here to... The Snake and Goose duo and their team. Yeah, one thing at scrum time is you've got to drive straight. You can't try and wheel in or bore in. You've got to drive straight, and if you want to drive them off the ball, GB just got a little bit wrong. Ishwood clears their lines. The best mullet in rugby sevens gets us back underway. David Richard, heavy contact with Williams. Canada to maintain possession here is Teal just double clutches the ball and just bursts into the defender they look up for the fight here Canada in this one but holding on is the call penalty goes against them yeah great party position by Roddick there just beat his man over the ball and was able to even hold on to the ball even after the clear out great stuff that's something that they've trained day in day out with Tony Roach back at the home training ground GB just completely suffocated Canada here in this first half. And then you Had loads of possession. Yeah. Fine. Set. Just the one try to Great Britain so far. Sofalaren's off the bench. He's on the inside of Roddick here, but he gives it out to Morgan Williams. Williams, that familiar left foot drift of his. Play it. Oh, I think they had rights to that, but GB with the try scoring opportunity and they will convert Morgan Williams. Yeah, Morgan Williams, like you said, Rupert, just setting everything up off his patented left foot. And then the tackler for Canada didn't roll away quick enough. And Roddick always wanted to play fast. And Canada just couldn't quite set their lines with their backs against the wall. Good start for GB here. They've kind of been inconsistent through this tournament, but they've really kind of showed their potential here in this first half. Yeah, even the, the fans are loving that first two tries from GB there. Conversion successful. So 12 0 to Great Britain. That's Tony Rokes, the head coach, on the right of shot. On the left of shot is Sean Lamons, who played over 100 test matches for Scotland in 15s. He was the assistant coach of the Scotland Sevens team, but he's come into Great Britain alongside the Englishman. Speaking of Englishmen who were also Scotsmen, Semi, Femi Sofalaren on the floor there has played for both nations at Sevens. Hand off from Kelly to Ferguson, Roddick. Here's Williams again. Offloads the ball to Ferguson, the skipper. Holds on, looks inside, out to Femi Sofalaren. 
soaring over the try line. Yeah. We'll yeah, check well, it. Well, that looked pretty good from here. Try, yes no, please. Yeah, I agreed with you. Pretty special Stand finish by, there Craig. from Sofa Lauren. Let's just check the grounding. With the fend and the jump, one-handed palm down. So we're just looking for separation here. If there's separation. Try. Okay, so his time is over, right? It's Correct. Knock on. Yep. No try, no clone. Half time. He doesn't like it. But then's the breaks, Femi. Still a good half for Great Britain. They'll go to the break, leading Canada by 12 points to nil. possession for Great Britain do you think perhaps that test they'll be concerned they're not further ahead in this game yeah absolutely I mean I think the standard that Tony Rocha said is he wants to just punish teams especially when they've had this much possession they want to put points on the board they understand how critical each game is in this Olympic qualification regulation season and with all those playmakers and those skilled players that he has at his dispatchery he just wants to be absolutely ruthless but on the flip side Canada would be very frustrated that they had a couple opportunities and just spilled the ball and it has it's come from their speed of threes they haven't quite secured the ruck and that's something that head coach Henry Paul will definitely make that adjustment at halftime Tony Rokes and Henry Paul the two opposing head coaches just walking off there together in the bottom of the shot they know each other very well from England sevens days gone by Twelve nil, Great Britain leading Canada. Ninth place semi-final, a date in the ninth place match with New Zealand later today is the prize. Ferguson gets us back on the way. Sofalaren, who was just denied a score before the break, has come down from that gingerly on his leg too, limping a bit. Mora flicks it to Awaru. Now watch this guy; he is powerful. Wrapped up for now by Kelly. Teal's there, knocks it on at the base, but no. GB had lost their feet, not supporting their own body weight. Here's Isherwood. The Warren. Lucky Kratz. A bit lateral at the moment. Canada. We keep getting decisions, but just not able to do too much with it at the moment yeah they haven't really played their framework that we've seen all weekend with kind of that short line looper out the back that's really manipulated the interior of defenses and Ishwood has really been the playmaker throughout the weekend they want the ball in his hands making decisions putting powerful players like Thiel and Awaru through holes so Thomas Ishwood will throw this Line back on. for Canada on defence, haven't scored yet. But they've got possession here on attack, and they do something with it. Awaru, that pass had some heat on it. Lucky Kratz, now it's Phil Burner, the captain in the four shirt, trying to get his knees to the Take floor. There you go, now the defender has to let go. Kratz, again, Awaru, yeah. He ain't passing, he's going to run straight into people. Teal, long ball over the top to Richard. David Richard shows some footwork. Chest pass, well intercepted by Morgan Williams. This tall Welshman's having a good game. Jamie Bard, an Englishman. We're going to work the blind side. Sofalaren, more of an open play runner. 
The danger of going over the sideline there. He's actually Long lost the ball in. forward. But we're talking coaches. And the, the, the amount of the British ball. coaches, head coaches in this competition here in Hong Kong this weekend. Henry Paul, the, uh, well, there's Tony Rokes, the Englishman. He's uh, part, was part of the England Seven set up in, in years gone by when they won titles here. And recently a head coach as well. And his counterpart on the other Max, side, up, Henry Paul, was player of the tournament here when England won the Hong Kong Sevens in 2006. There he is, Henry Paul, HP or Sauce, if you like. That's a brand of Sauce. In the UK, Zach, you're looking at me funny. Nine. Like ketchup, but stronger. But what'd you tell me? It's a little better than ketchup. <laughs> Here come Canada. The Sean Bowen. The Sean Bowen. Oh, yeah. Where has he been all weekend? Sean Bowen with authority. Stamping his mark on this game. Very powerful individual. Great work by Canada setting up. They're big, powerful runners. Great little swim move on the inside. Bowen just too powerful for Ferguson there and stamps it down with authority. Well, he played in the Canadian Football League, the CFL. Crossover athlete. That's what he can provide. Yeah, we know these football players have aggression flowing through their veins. They love a bit of contact. Good response from Canada there. That's what they wanted to do. Put GB in their half, get the ball back, and then use their powerful runners to get over the, the whitewash for five. Issue it. Coombs takes it. Got a good game on now, 12-7. Kelly. Morgan Williams setting up a breakdown, flooding the breakdown here, Canada, and they get what they want. They timed that really, really well. And gone go. That's been knocked to the floor. That could be a yellow card, double whistle. Hands off, boys. Hands off. Yeah, that's what you call a professional foul. Not back 10 and then intercepting the ball. That's a no-no in rugby seven, so he'll spend two minutes in the naughty bin. Perfect opportunity for Canada here. Three minutes to go. As we say in Canadian Thank hockey, this is a power play. Can, a great they put, can they put the puck in the back of the net? That's the question. Here's Isherwood. The Waru. Ergas. On the loop. And here he is again. To Sean Bowen has taken this game by the scruff of the neck. He is fired up and ready to go. Yeah, looking like a CFL running back, just shredding off defenders. And that's more like what we've seen from Canada, looping players, sitting down the interior defense, and unleashing power for players like Sean Bowen on the edge for his second. Canada right back in this. Conversion is the go-ahead score. It won't make it. Two minutes and a bit of change to go but the Sean Bowen what an impact yeah crossover athlete you love to see those come across here in North America and this man look at the size of him built like an absolute freight train issue it gets us restarted in the direction of Coombs again competing is in Gongo in the air that was a a fair contest, but Kelly has it for Great Britain. Kaleen Beretta. Max McFarlane. That drifting run, he loves to search for a gap. Does Magic Max. Slow to get up off the floor, though, is Kelly again. Paddy Kelly. Pulls out, Coombs finally realises the situation, but he's been put over the sideline, and Canada are going to get an attacking line out here. Still with the power play as well. Fantastic pressure defense by Canada there. Knowing that GB is down by one man, they can really put pressure around that breakdown. And just unlucky it spilled out and got thrown into touch, but Isherwood, the Qualcomm collected mullet there. Can he lead his troops? 
to put a puck in the back of the net once again. Indeed. My question is, who's going to be the wait, first wait, Canadian who's brave enough wait, to choose number wait. 99? Chip the cap, turn back on. The great one, Wayne Gretzky. Teal, Isherwood. Lockie Kratz gets tied up in midfield. Ball's been Rip stripped out by Barreto. What a play that is from Colleen Barreto. Went forward though, so they'll get another chance, Canada. Just pure strength by Barreto there. Just got his paw in there and just ripped it with all his might. Unfortunate for him, it went forward. And now the yellow card's back on, even in this game up. But Canada with a midfield scrum, they get to pick which side of they want to attack, which mismatch. They want to have Bowens on the far side. Set. He's been an impact player so far in this game. And Ergas on Forward. the short side of the 11 shirt. Here he is with Isherwood. Isherwood, double clutch. Elias Ergas <laughs> scores for Canada. The UBC Thunderbird may well have won this for the North Americans. What a comeback. Isherwood, the cool calm operator, understands that he could attack that short side. Creates a 2v1, a little pump to sit his defender. And then Aragas, there's the pump there. Just sat Robbie Ferguson for half a second, which gave Aragas the free run to the try zone. Oh, yeah, that's brotherhood at its finest right there. They understand how important that is and how critical it is in this season. Canada have beaten Great Britain. What a win for them. Thomas Isherwood. Isherwood was crucial to getting them over the line. Canada, 17, Great Britain, 12. Canada will play for ninth place against New Zealand later today here in Hong Kong. Deshaun Bowen, how crucial was his impact, Zach? Well, he, was, he was like a man possessed. He got that ball in his hand and all he saw was the try line. Doesn't matter how many Great Britain defenders were in front of him. He wasn't going to be stopped. And Isherwood there. He was the difference maker. Hugs all round. Matt Awaru, Bowen, Hergas got the winner. Kratz came on and added something too. They really did deserve that. They were under the pump and they found a way. Canadian support here as well. They really enjoyed that. Got to say they deserved it. They've been close in a few games here this weekend. Gracious handshakes from Tony Rokes and the, and the Great Britain coaching staff. But they'll go again. Not the worry. They do have some big players they can bring off the bench and make an impact. And that certainly was the case in this one. That's their third win of the weekend. Let's go. So we're just queuing up some reaction for you and we're ready to go. It is Deshaun Bowen who's down there with Dallas Stanford. Thanks Roops. Deshaun, you made an immediate impact off the bench, just exactly what your team was looking for. Yeah, um, first thing that coach says to me, uh, every game is set an impact, set that level, set that, um, that high level and uh, and that's what I wanted to do. I just want to come out and, and perform for the boys and help for the, help the boys to take that win. Coming from other sports, talk about how important it is for crossover folks to see rugby and take part like you are doing. Um, honestly, like it is, it's, I didn't know what rugby was ah, like 20 years ago. Uh, first time seeing it was on TV and um, thanks to a high school coach um, who helped me uh, be, become the, the, the guy I am now. Um, yeah, it's, it's really important, right? You know, you can use the different attributes from other sports into this one, right? Well, thank you so much. Great to see you so far. Congrats on your tries here. We'll see you at the next game. Thank you very much.